Hi there, Elwood City Wolverines fans alongside Quaker Valley Quaker fans. Welcome into Jack Critchfield Park here at Slip Rock University as tonight we bring you live coverage of some 3A Section 1 section baseball here. It's the Quaker Valley Quakers taking on your Elwood City Wolverines here on Elwood City Sports. My name is Brad Wenhorst for Elwood City. And this game was scheduled specifically for a start time of 4.30 yesterday, if you see on your screen at Sanders Field. But it quickly changed into a night game here. Wednesday night action, baseball action. Uh, put your, uh, basically, your night cap of the Pirates and the Nationals off to the side. We've got baseball here for Elwood City first. Quaker Valley, Quakers in section play coming in 0-2. Just on the flip side, Elwood City as well, 0-2. Both these teams are looking for their first victory in section play as we have those early, early standings there. Mohawk Warriors defeated the Nishanic Lancers on Monday in a bumped-up game 24 hours ahead of time due to the rain and the weather coming in. So they are sitting there at the top, 3-0. Riverside just right behind them, undefeated as well in section play, 2-0, 3-0 in overall record. Then you've got the Shenango Wildcats. Who are an upstart team there. They are defeated the Beaver Falls Tigers back-to-back -back games very convincingly, 2-0 in section play. And then you've got the bottom four fighting for that last spot. You're going to have the Nishanic Lancers, Elwood City Wolverines, Quaker Valley Quakers, and Beaver Falls Tigers fighting for that fourth spot. It's early, folks. It's only two or three games in the section play, but you don't want to fall behind the eight ball quickly. You can fall in the trap of trying to win back-to-back -back games against a foe that may be, well, a little bit more challenging. So we got warm-ups here. Elwood City just completed their warm-ups just a couple minutes ago. We'll wrap up Quaker Valley here f first. But in the meantime, we got some time to talk about a little bit of everything going on. Yesterday's schedule event was supposed to be uh, officially the day for um, the Autism Awareness and Acceptance Day uh, for Elwood City Wolverines baseball team. Uh, Quaker Valley chimed in quickly with Elwood City Sports uh, to also do the benefit as well. You'll see both teams actually, Quaker Valley right now, wearing the black and autism awareness shirts. Elwood City wore the blue ones. Both teams dived into this, and both of them are donating the money specifically to a good group. It's the Lawrence County Autism Warriors, and uh, we're going to see them at some point as long as we get some good weather. Uh, that we, we reached out, and uh, Elwood City Baseball is actually going to have them come to an, a game, an actual event, and run the bases, so we do appreciate that. All the proceeds will be donated to Lawrence County um, uh, Autism Warriors, and we do appreciate everybody, including the entire Elwood City District, on board on your screen. We see some teachers as well uh, joining in for that photo op. On top of that, we're going to do a quick little game recap. Last time out, Joseph Roth at Riverside, he was one for two. He had the two runs scored on the RBIs. A tough one for the Wolverines, a 12-2 loss uh, with the Grand Slam to basically put that one over in five innings as the 10-run roll came into play. Tough battle after the first two wins of the season for Elwood City to go against Riverside. And if you don't know anything about Riverside, Riverside was undefeated last year, 26-0, and they continue the process. Uh, they're officially 29 straight games. They have won now, and, and it continues. And uh, they are the, the top of the leaders in the section, but uh, Elwood City knows that just – because you may have lost back-to-back -back games does not mean there's games to be had, but more importantly, you can make your way back in. And we've seen teams get hot. And uh, right above, uh, right in that mix is the Mohawk Warriors. They had a battle a couple times. Uh, just like Elwood City, they had a lot of baseball players that were basketball players. And uh, they carry over. And so far, section play has been pretty tight in the works in the bottom four to figure this one out. So big one here between Quaker Valley Quakers and the Elwood City Wolverines. Our player spotlight for today was number five, Nate Kennedy, and uh, just a sophomore for the Wolverines, uh, but he's already made an impact on this team, uh, playing now officially at second base. Uh, any, if you know anything about the infield in terms of high school baseball, uh, you, you need depth and you need a lot of ability to move around the bases. And this year, Wolverines have a couple players there that can play in different positions and pitch also. So Nate Kennedy was our spotlight. You can check us out 
on our Twitter pages, our Facebook pages, YouTube pages, the whole works. You can see all the information there um, about our player spotlights. So both teams coming here for a photo op. You'll see the backside of those shirts. Or, uh, the donations for Elwood City uh, was, the, I believe, the company for Lutz. I think there was a couple companies in Newcastle for uh, Quaker Valley, uh, Big Shot Bob's Wings. They also donated and uh, helped pay for the shirts and all that money. Like we said, the proceeds go to the Lawrence County uh uh, auto, uh, Autism Awareness uh, Warriors Group. And uh, April is World Aut Autism Awareness Month uh, around the entire uh, United States. Teams at the high school level are buying into this process and, and doing their parts. And uh, like we said, we're going to have the Warriors Group from Lawrence County come at some point and run the bases in Elwood City. Barring weather. Uh, we do appreciate Slippery Rock University allowing this game to happen. Uh, people made a quick call to make this one happen. Beautiful turf field. The sun is about ready to set here shortly, so uh, center field and the outfield is going to have to play with sun for a little bit, about a half hour or so, but it will quickly uh, will be under the lights. A couple interesting facts about Slippery Rock University as the coaches meet at home plate and uh, the umpires talk about the facilities here and in play and out of play around the entire uh, field here. Uh, Slip Rock University has had their own taste in the major leagues, and that was one of the things that the Elwood City coaches were talking about before pregame started. Uh, uh, there's two retired uh, numbers and individuals here at Slip Rock University, and those are Lou Trevino and Matt Adams. Uh, a lot of people from the Pittsburgh area knows Matt Adams very well with the Cardinals and uh, the Atlanta Braves. Lou Trevino coming on recently in the past two years. He was with the Oakland A's, and then now he's with the Yankees. Uh, Lou Trevino actually picked Pitched here at Slipper Rock 2011 to 2013. He had a 19 and 9 record and a 199 ERA. The more important stat, he had 217 strikeouts in 213 innings uh, for Slipper Rock. And uh, there's a reason why he was uh, his number was retired here just a couple years back. Uh, and on top of it, Matt Adams. Uh, don't forget about Matt Adams. He batted 454 here at Slipper Rock University. And on top of that, he had 27 home runs in his collegiate level, starring off with that Slipper Rock team, a really good baseball team in those three years there. He was 96-55 with Slipper Rock. So some big numbers there, both individuals, and uh, some a little baseball, Major League Baseball spotlights. So we'll take a time out here. We'll wait for uh, some lineups here. We got some information here. We're ready to go. We'll take a break, and we'll come back for first pitch here. It's your Elwood City Wolverines, Quaker Valley Quakers, next on Elwood City Sports. All right, folks, welcome back into Jack Critchfield Park here in Slippery Rock University. 
Outlet City is the home team officially for tonight's game, so they'll be in the field of play first. Their lineup is at uh, starting us off at first is number 25, the left fielder Jacob Biscup. Number two, is second batter, shortstop Isaiah Lutz. Number four, Jordan Keller, catcher. Number 13, Sam Lannis will be playing first base. Number three, Aaron Lake will be playing third base. On the mound will be the pitcher in the DH for himself, and that'll be number 12, Will Nardone. Number one, Michael Cuevas in center field. Zero, Ryan Widmeyer in right field. And then number five, Nate Kennedy at second base. Will Nardone comes into play 0-1 on the season. Uh, the 6-18 ERA, but most of those runs, actually all five of those runs were against Riverside in the second game. He has five runs given up, five earned in five and two-thirds, seven hits, four walks, four strikeouts, and has thrown 101 pitches. On the flip side, leading us off will be number 97, and that is the center fielder, Ryan Finnamore. Finnamore for the Quaker Valley Quakers on the season so far. A staggering number, pretty good batter in the leadoff, batting 8 for 12. A nice solid 6-6-7 uh, six, six, batting average. When you're two-thirds of your batting average is a hit, 8 out of 12 times, you're doing some damage. And... Uh, we're going to see, I have a feeling, uh, playing on the turf here, you may see a couple stolen bases or stolen base attempts in this one. So the sun is setting here in the outfield. Bar with us on the, the, the brightness-wise. It's going to eventually drop, and uh, we're going to be playing on the lights here fairly short within the half hour. So we are about ready to go here. As Will Nardone takes the mound. Here's the first pitch officially in the books as a grounder here to third base. Throw to first in, plenty of time. A one pitch to the third baseman Landis, or sorry, Aaron Lake to Landis. He makes the play. There's one gun quickly in the top of the first. So up next for the Quakers is number six, the shortstop. That's Oscar Roig. So far on the season, he's two for five for Quaker Valley. It's a nice start there for Will Nardone. One pitch, one out. Pitch just misses outside for ball one. First pitch start time officially 6.55 local time. Temperature right now is a beautiful blistery Sunny, 47 degrees, so uh, expect this one to be real close to 35 degrees by the end of it. Ball hit the center field, and unfortunately, Cuevas with the sun, he misplays it. That's going to drop in front of him, so that'll be indirectly a base hit there for Roig. That sun played a factor on that one quickly, so the runner is at first. We did say that outfield is going to have to play with that sun and quickly just like that. Second batter gets on base because of the sun. First pitch swing. Makes the count 0-1. At the plate is number 11. That's Gavin Falgren. He's 4 for 11, the catcher for Quaker Valley. Contact fouled out of play. Quickly, 0-2 count for Nardone. So, 2 count for Nardone. Drops, just misses the zone. Makes the count 1-2. Over to first, runners back safe. We did say um, Quaker Valley does attempt bases here a decent amount of times. Pitch just misses outside. They'll even account 2 2.
Contact back up the middle. This is going to go to Cuevas here. This time he's got it tracked. He'll make the catch for the second out. So a little bit of an adjustment with the sunglasses for the second out. So up next for Quaker Valley is going to be number one. And that is the pitcher today as well. That's Todd Cagle. He is batting 200, two for 10 in the early going. First pitch from Nardone. Contacted foul as the runner was going, so that'll set him back at first base. Baseball field here. Jack Critchfield Park was recently renovated just a couple years back in 2022. They completely finished an entire turf field. And uh, they actually are going to finish everything off. They're going to do the softball field next year right there in the right side of your screen up on the hill. So give kudos to Slipper Rock allowing this to happen we talked to the game manager, the field manager here for Slipper Rock, and uh, he, he welcomed us 100% across the board. So 1-1 one, one count here to Cagle. Down low, called strike, makes the count 1-2 in favor of Nardone. Pitch misses outside, catches the runner. It's going to second, throw to first. They got him in the rundown now officially here. As we'll cycle through, this is going to be an interesting call. Officially tagged out there by the catcher. So that will end the inning in the top first. Just a 12-minute top inning. We'll head to the bottom of the first. No score. All right, folks, welcome back here. Bottom of the first. On the mound, defensively wise, will be the pitcher number one, Todd Cagle. He comes into play 0-1, 525 ERA. 
He's pitched six and two thirds, six hits, five runs, five all earned, eight walks, four strikeouts, and 120 pitches. So similar numbers between these two pitchers, Will Nardone and Todd Cagle. Leading off for the Wolverines will be number 25, the left fielder, and that's Jacob Biscop. So far on the season, he's two for 12, as the bats are starting to got to get going here for the Wolverines. First pitch just smacks the between the two and the five. That's the third time, I think, this year for Jacob Biscop being hit. And quickly a runner for the Wolverines. So that'll bring up number two, the shortstop, and that's Isaiah Lutz. Isaiah Lutz started his freshman year for the Wolverines at that shortstop position and played a couple games at second base and quickly fell into that sixth spot there at shortstop. He comes to play two for nine, but he has been walked three times this year. Bun attempt, he unfortunately does go, so that'll be strike one. It's a big opportunity here. The Wolverines so far in the season, in those first two games, they played the small ball. This is exactly that setup. They get a runner on first, a bun him over, and get him in scoring position. Bun attempt gets pulled back, evens the count. Attempt again, pulled back in time. 2-1 count on Lutz. First base coach, Brad Welsh. Third base will be the head coach, Chris Wise. 2-1 pitch, drops outside. That makes the count 3-1 in favor of Lutz. Wind is blowing from right to left down the left field line, so expect a couple of things to carry to the left side. Pitch up high, ball four, and quickly just like that, runners first and second for the Wolverines. So up next for Elwood City will be the catcher, Number four, Jordan Keller. Jordan Keller on the season. Just like Lutz and Biscup, he's got two hits. He's two for eight on the season. So nobody out. Runners at first and second for Elwood City. Good contact down the third baseline. Oh, ho, 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 ho. wow. That was fouled by about two feet. If that one stays in play, there's a chance Keller could have been at third. So a very loud foul ball down the line. One count to Keller. Pitcher steps off the mound, just checks the runner at second. Biscop, one of the more active runners on the baselines. You'll see him skip left and right a lot. Here's the pitch. Outside, that'll even account 1-1. One, one. So far... Eight pitches for Cagle, six of them have been balls. Last second time there, granted to the batter, Keller. He kind of tells Keller, it's got to be quicker than that. Let's speed this up, so a little check there. Runners first and second, nobody out. 1-1 one, one pitch from Cagle. 
This one drops in for a called strike. As Cagle gets ahead 1-2. Contact to the third baseman. He'll make the tag at the base at third base. So he'll get the fielder's choice. Out at third, there's Biscup. So one out, runner still first and second. So there's one gone, first and second here for number 13. That's the first baseman, Sam Landis. Sam's looking for his first base hit. He's been walked and hit as well a couple times during the season. First pitch drops in for strike. <laughs> Sam kind of is the curveball guy here, and he's batting lefty. Most of the Wolverines bat right. Pitch outside. Evens count 1 1. Early going here. 6.50 start time officially. 47 degrees. As the sun has almost completely dropped on the field. Pitch up high. Gets past the catcher, but the runners do stay at first and second. Count in favor of the batter, Landis. Looking for his first hit of the season. 2-1 count. Inside. Just misses up high. That'll push the count now to 3-1. and one. Here's the pitch. Outside, swing and a miss there by Landis. That'll make the count full, 3-2. Early opportunity here for Elwood City to get on the board in this section game. Pitch up high and outside for ball four. And that'll plate the runners first, second, and third. Bases loaded. One out. So up next for the Wolverines is number three, the third baseman, Aaron Lake. Comes into play two for 11. He's had some good contacts and a good at-bats here during the season. Pitch drops in, catches the corner for a called early strike. 0-1 in favor of Cagle. Pitch out to the right side here. We'll even count 1-1. One, one. So far, Will Nardone for the Wolverines. 13 pitches, Cagle at 18. There up high, push the count to 2-1. Dead centers 400 feet down the lines is 315 here at Critchfield Park. Contact there back to the pitcher. He'll throw him. This could be a double play. It is. Wow. And Quaker Valley will get out of the inning scathed, unscathed for that matter. We'll head to the second inning. It's 0-0.
All right, folks, welcome back into Critchfield Park here, top of the second. Now, after that double play from first, or sorry, from fourth home play to first base, gets Quaker Valley out of the inning, and they'll quickly come up to the plate here. So, quick turnaround by the pitcher, Cagle, and because they caught the rundown in the last inning, Cagle will bat again. He did not finish his first at bat here. So he quickly gets ahead, 2-0 on Nardone. It's here down low, hits the turf, and that'll make the count quickly, 3-0 in favor of Cagle. So that play there at the end of the inning for Quaker Valley kind of got their dugout going here. You can hear him in the distance here. 3-0 count up high for ball four, and quickly just like that, Cagle's on base. It's a four-pitch walk there by Nardone. That'll bring up number 23, the first baseman, Nolan Wagner. Wagner, four for 11. One of three individuals on this Quaker Valley team that has more than four hits. Bunt attempt there, drops down, fouled off. So I'll get Nardone ahead 0-1. On attempt back to the pitcher, Nardone. He'll throw the first. Plenty of time for the first out. So Wagner gets the job done. So up next for Quaker Valley, be number 24. That's Jack Zuba. The right fielder comes into play one for nine in the early season. First pitch from Nardone. Catches the outside corner for strike one. Catches the corner once again and quickly Nardone looking to bounce back 0-2. Drops down off the turn, one, two. Nardone, sophomore for the Wolverines here, second year of pitching. He's done a pretty darn good job for the Wolverines in the early going in his career. Old City, for the most part, a, a very youthful, very young team, but at the same time, a very experienced team as they only had one or two positions from last year to fill, and they have done such. One, two count from Nardone. Drops outside, just misses, makes the count even, 2-2. Two, two. Awesome to see Zuba there. Sporting no gloves. Bare hands here for Zuba. Time was called by the batter, so the runner will have to go back to second there. <laughs> no, close. Good opportunity there to run. We did say it. Quick Valley will run the bases if allowed. Two two count. Contact there to the third baseman. He'll charge it. He'll look back to runner. Throw to first. Plenty of time. The runner will make it though to third. So two outs. Nice play there by Lake, but give credit also 
to number one, Cagle, reading that play very well. So two outs here, runner at third, and at the plate is number two, the third baseman, Nick Allen, comes into play three for 11 for Quakers. Swing and a miss there, drops low for strike one. Contact there to the right side. This is in play, foul territory there. First baseman Sam Lannis will glove it for the third out. So Nardone gets out of trouble there at third base. We'll head to the bottom of the second. It's still scoreless, 0-0. All right, folks, welcome back here. Bottom of the second, scoreless so far. Both teams have had opportunities at third base, but no runs have come across. That'll bring up number 12, the pitcher. Here's our first pitcher-pitcher duel for Elwood City, Will Nardone. And, wow, just like that, he gets hit by the pitch. So runner there for the Wolverines. The second time Kegel's hit somebody today. And you, you can kind of tell, different rubber here, different uh, turf mound there for our slippery rock. And uh, sometimes that causes some issues with your follow through on the pitching mound. So up next for Elwood City is number one, the center fielder, Michael Cuevas. One for nine on the season. Very good defensive player. Can cover a lot of ground there at the center field position. And it looks like he will be bunting as well, or at least attempt to. Small ball so far been the factor. And if you hit a home run here, then that means you caught everything. <laughs> Pitch outside, he slips on the mound as Kegel, and that's going to put the runner at second. And that was a courtesy runner. That was number six. So we'll get an exact name here real quick. That's Carlo Nardone. So one one count here. Pitch missed there. I'll make the count two one. Here's pitch outside once again. Throw down to second in time, but no tag. That makes the count 3-1 in favor of the batter, Cuevas. So Carlo 
Nardone. Courtesy runner there for Will Nardone. 3-1 count. Good contact there by Cuevas. That'll force the runner to third. Play is made in time, but Carla Nardone does make it to third. So up next for Elwood City, as you can hear it from the fans here for Elwood City, is number zero, and that's the right fielder, and that's going to be Ryan Widmeyer. Wid, so far in this season, one for one. Pitch comes in quickly for 0-1 count. Pitch outside, evens the count 1-1. Temperature right now still 47 degrees, but with the dropping temperature and the s no sun, it feels like 38 here in Slippery Rock. Pitch inside. Unfortunately, Wid does go. It gets past the catcher, and that'll plate the first run for the Wolverines as Carlo Nardone comes across. It's 1-0 Elwood City. Run scores, 1-2 count now to Widmeyer. Up and high and outside, evens the count 2-2. Two, two. Swing there, fouled out of play near the Elwood City dugout. I'll keep the count 2 2. Two two count to Widmar. Goes up and over his head. Don't mind him not wearing that one because that would have hit him right in the head. So that'll make the count full, 3-2. Witt steps out real quick, calls time. So we cross 7.30 local time here. Fouled off by Witt, and unfortunately that hit the catcher. Oh, that is tough. If I'm correct, that hit right above the knee area right above the pads. <clears throat> so they'll shake it off here. Trainers will come out just to check them here. Mm. And that's cra <laughs> that's it's crazy. Catcher wears padding all the way up above the knee and the way he was bent it found and dropped right on right above that kneecap. Mm. He tests it out here. He looks okay. Coaches will come over, talk to him. Give credit to the home plate umpire, giving him some time here. And looks like number 11, Falgren, will stay in there, and he's ready to go. So back to game here, full count, 3-2, one out, one run scored via the pass ball. Contact there by Widmeyer to third base. This is going to be a tough throw. Plenty of time by the third baseman, number two, Nick Allen, for the second out. So up next for the Wolverines. First pitch swing in there is number five. And that is Nate Kennedy, the first or sorry, second baseman. One for eight in this one. On the season so far. Again, Elwood City and Quick Valley both playing four games each. Swing and a miss is puts Kennedy behind 0-2.
So 0-2 count here, up and outside. Pushes the count 1-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. That'll end the inning. We'll head to the top of the third. It's 1-0 Elwood City. All right, folks, welcome back here. Top of the third here. Third inning for Quick Value at the plate. As they fall behind 0-1 in that second inning. First pitch here. Swing and a miss there. That's by number 10, the left fielder, Noah Fardo. One for six on the early season here for Quaker Valley. Contact back to the pitcher. Nice glove by Nardone. Flips over the first base for the first out. up next for Quaker Valley. First pitch outside for ball one. And that is the designated hitter, number 68, Joe Zuba. Contact back up the middle. A screamer. Nice line drive hit there by Zuba for his first hit of the season. He's one for two now. Gets the first official, uh, we'll call the second, base hit for Quaker Valley. So back to the top of the lineup here and looks like Quaker Valley is going to use the bottom to the top lineup here for their offense. Number 97, center fielder. First pitch called strike. First time up. He grounded out. First pitch swinging. The third baseman Aaron Lake. One count. Contact. Nice contact. This could be trouble. Widmeyer's tracking it. He misses it. This is in play. So it's at least a single, and it's going to round out to be a double there. Hard contact by Finnemore. So that will put runners at second and third now with only one out. Tough play there for Widmeyer as that one was struck hard. In fact, it went all the way to the wall, that 315 mark. Bounced it on the warning track, hit the wall. So good contact there by Finnamore. Up next is number six, the shortstop. He had the fly ball technically dropped for base hit in front of Cuevas. So big opportunity here for Quaker Valley. 
First and third is playing a little bit closer for Elwood City. count. Up high once again. Makes the count 3-0. Drop ball four there. Misses the zone and that'll put the bases loaded now with only one out for Quaker Valley. And up at the plate is the catcher, number 11, Gavin Falgren. First time up, he had the fly out to center fielder, Quavis. Wolverines looking to try to get one of their first double plays of the season, possibly to get out of this inning with no runs given up. Quickly like that, Nardone, five straight balls in this one. Looking to pitch to contact. Swing and a miss. That'll even account 1-1. One, one. Anything pulled to the left side. There is a gap. First and third playing tight to the line. Swing and a miss. Once again, that'll make the count now 1-2 in favor of Nardone. So he quickly sets up again here. Head 1-2. Swing and miss, strike three. And that's the big, big, big second out for the Wolverines. So up next is number one, the pitcher, Todd Cagle. He's going to have to look to help himself out here. First time up, he was walked on four pitches. Two for ten on the season. First pitch outside for ball one. Time called by Kegel. Contact back up the middle. Tough play here off the glove of Nate Kennedy. That's going to plate one, and they're going to send the second. It's now 2-1 Quaker Valley. So nice contact by the pitcher, Todd Kegel. Nice attempt by Nate Kennedy, but it goes off his glove for a base hit. That'll play two runs. So first and third now for Quaker Valley. Two outs, and now batting is Wagner. Pitch outside. Ball one. Pitch outside, throw down the first, and back is the runner, safe. Up and high. Now pushes the count to 3-0. Crossed about an hour here. Of stream time. Official start was 6.50. So closing on the hour. That one drops for a strike. Makes count 3-1. Wagner first time up. Had the sacrifice bunt back to the pitcher. Contact fouled off. 
the runner was going, so they'll keep the count now full, 3-2. Fouled off at the end of the bat once again. I'll keep the count 3 2. And unfortunately, I think the exact same thing just happened to Jordan Keller. The foul tip. Catchers wear so much protection up the legs, but this one dropped right above the knee. Instead of the left leg, this one's the right leg. So the coach is here. Bob Ratty. Brad Walsh will come over and check with Keller. Make sure he's okay. Get a little break in the action here. Temperature here officially 46 degrees. The wind is actually b is blowing in into home plate now. So a little bit of a change here, and you can kind of tell a pretty pretty darn cold breeze over the back shoulders. So Keller looks pretty good now. He'll set back in there. It's two outs, three two counts. Big opportunity for Quaker Valley. Step off there. Runner goes to second. Throws in time for the third out before the runner comes across. So that'll hold the score two one. A nice play there by the pitcher Will Nardone. We'll head to the bottom of the third. Two one Quaker Valley. Folks, welcome back into Critchfield Park here. 2-1 lead, Quaker Valley. We'll head to the bottom of the third here. At the plate is number 25. Takes the first pitch there, called strike. That is Jake Biscup. Pitch outside, evens the count 1-1. First time up for Biscup was a walk. So far on the season two for 12, but now officially four walks. He's also been hit by pitch twice this season, so a lot of batters here for Elwood as they try to crowd that plate as much as they can. Pitch catches outside corner. Makes the count even now, 2-2. Two -two. Two 
3-2 count. Contact there fouled off. Keeps the count even at 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss, strike three there. One gone for Quaker Valley. So up next is number two. And that's Isaiah Lutz. First time up, he was walked as well. First pitch here. Contact to the third baseman. Nice glove play. He'll throw to first. Plenty of time for the second out. So far, Quaker Valley four hits in this one for two runs. Elwood City one run, but so far held hitless in this one. And at the plate, number four, Jordan Keller. Keller back up to the pitcher. He'll glove it up high, throw to first in plenty of time. A 1-2-3 inning. We'll head to the top of the fourth. It's 2-1 Quaker Valley. All right, folks, welcome back here. Bond the third. Sorry, check that. <laughs> Got to add an inning there. Top of the fourth. Quick Valley coming to the plate here. So far, pitching-wise, 46 pitches for Cagle, 49 for Nardone. Up at the plate will be number 23, Wagner. And he'll get to officially get his official at bat here as the runner was caught there at second last inning. First pitch. Spout off, makes the count 0-1. First time up, Wagner had that sacrifice bunt once again, back to the pitcher. As the lights are officially on here from Critchfield Park. One, one count here. Inside, off the hands there, fouled off, makes the count one, two. Different events going on today here at Slipper Rock University campus. They've got field hockey, I believe, up at the football field. Contact there to third base. It's going to be fouled off, though. The weather bug is for sports has been an issue not only for Elwood and all Lawrence County, but it also has hit in Butler County. Uh, field manager here for Slipper Rock said they have not played five softball games yet because of the field conditions for the university. So we wish the weather to exit left door, right door quickly. 
The next scheduled game for Elwood City will be these Quaker Valley Quakers, the, the doubleheader once again for section play. It is scheduled for tomorrow, and uh, coaches may not go on record. I will. Uh, don't expect that one to happen where it's set. So <laughs> expect that one to possibly change as well. 2-2 two, two counts, call right down the middle. Strike three, the first strikeout for Nardone. So up next for Quaker Valley will be number 24. That's Jack Zuba. First time up, he grounded out the third baseman, Aaron Lake. Temperature now. In the area, feels like 37 degrees. So, the voice sounds a little bit different. It's getting cold. Gloves are on. Knit hat is on. Extra layers are on. So are the fans. Give a good credit, though, to Quaker Valley and Elwood. Good, good, good crowd on hand for this one. Good strike down the line, but it is just foul by a foot or so. Next count 2 in favor of Nardone. If you've not been to Jack Critchfield Park, it's very easy access. Gate right up the middle. And good section here. You can get right behind home plate. You can, well, again, off the record, you can give the umpire all you want if you wanted to here at Critchfield Park. 0-2 count. Contact there to left side. This is going to go into the dugout area. Down the third baseline, foul. So that'll keep the count 0 2. Softball field up near the right light post there, near the scoreboard. That's the softball field. They got the equestrian team, the big building up on the left side, and the football stadium down third baseline here, tucked into the left side. 0 2 pitch. Quick pitch there by Nardone up high for ball one. One two count. The third, or the turf for that matter, evens the count two two. A lot of events going on for Iowa City Sports, track and field. Uh, they Their first events have been delayed. Uh, their event that was supposed to be had yesterday is now next Thursday. Mohawk and Beaver Falls. Contact back up the middle of the center fielder, Cuevas. He'll get underneath of it here, and he'll catch the ball for the second out. Tennis. Moving right along, they've already played four or five matches. They were, I think, at section singles today at Brady's Run. I could be wrong. I'll we'll have to check in on that one. Coach John DeBuano helps us out with some stats there on the fly. Softball team has been in action. They were in action yesterday. Kind of caught us off guard. They were at a 4 o'clocker. Four o'clock start there at Newcastle Stadium. They got to play on the new field. Fly ball to right fielder here, Widmeyer. He'll catch it here for the third out. So we'll finish that thought. We'll talk about the softball team here after the half inning. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. It's 2-1 Quaker Valley.
All right, folks, halfway through this one, we're headed to the back half of it. Bottom fourth here. I would say still looking for their first hit of this game. they got to get the bats rolling, or hitting for that matter. At the plate is number 13, San Landis. He's still looking for his first hit of the season. Pitch outside for ball one. Sam playing at first base for the Wolverines in rotation with Joseph Roth. Contact there fouled off, evens the count 1-1. One, one. So Elwood City softball team officially 5-0 and on the season, and they just defeated the Newcastle Hurricanes 10-8. It was a 10-3 game. They did give up a couple runs late, but they made it interesting with the victory, though. Play here for Sam Landis. He'll get there in plenty of time. In fact, Cagle was a step off of the plate before it even occurred. So that'll be a nice run down the first baseline. Base hit, first one of the season for Landis. So up at the plate now is number three, Aaron Lake. Looking to get in in the action. Last time up, he bonded up to the pitcher for a sack bunt there to advance the runners. So runner at first is Landis. Officially gets the first hit for the Wolverines. Bunt attempt. Good bunt attempt by Lake. Back to the pitcher. He'll throw to first. Nobody's covering second. Throws off line. Oh boy. And in fact, they're going to say that the throw pulled first baseman off of the the base. So the runner is safe. So that'll be an error on the pitcher, Cagle, on the offline throw. First and second now with nobody out for the Wolverines. And quickly, time is called by Quaker Valley. We'll take a time with them, bottom of the fourth. Folks, welcome back here. Uh, to finish that thought, the softball team, 5-0, and scoring 10 runs. They've outscored the opponent, oh boy, I think that's now 67 runs to 9 or 10 on the season so far through five games. So head coach Gary Rosansky's got the girls Doing a pretty darn good job, and give credit to Amber McQuishan. Still rolling through 5-0 and this season already on the mound for softball. Bun attempt pulled back by Nardone. Makes the early count 1-0. So at the plate is Will Nardone. He can try to help himself out here. As he's down 2-1, but so far, small ball has been where it's at for the Wolverines. 1-0 count from Cagle. Bun attempt, back up. Nice placement there by Nardone. Throw in time to first base, but he'll get the sack bunt to advance the runners to second and third. One and on. So up the plate is number one, Michael Cuevas. Opportunity here. First pitch called strike. He had the ground out to the right side to advance the runner. Eventually he did score. Hit by pitch on the back numbers again, the third time tonight by Cagle. And that'll put Cuevas now at first. Bases are loaded with only one gone. And that brings up the sixth man for the basketball team, 
Now turn baseball. That's Ryan Widmeyer, number zero. First time up, he grounded out the third baseline. So on the season, one for two. Looking to make something happen. There is a gap right behind the pitcher here. Pitch up high for ball one. So we officially crossed the 8 o'clock hour. That one drops in for a strike. Makes the count 1-1. One, one. Up high. Once again, makes the count 2-1 in favor of Widmeyer. Two one count. This one drops in for a strike. So Wittenmeyer's taking some pitches here. It's two two. Two two count from Cagle. Contact fouled off. So Wittenmeyer stays alive. Two two. Contact there, fouled off once again. It's a good battle here between Widmeyer and Cagle. Two count once again. One gone. Contact backed up the middle. This is going to drop for a base hit. This is going to be trouble. Runners were not advancing. Widmeyer's going to go to second base. Nobody covering. That's going to score both runs. Nice contact by Widmeyer for the double. And that will put Elwood City ahead now 3-2. to two. So nice contact by Widmeyer. And that will basically just advance all the runners. Two runs come across and second and third still with only one gone. So up next is number five, Nate Kennedy. Only one gone and an opportunity here. Anything in the, even in the dirt or the, in play to the right side could be trouble. It's a dugout now for Elwood City. Starts ramping up a little bit. Off speed pitch. Ooh. Caught Nate Kennedy ahead of that one. A swing and a miss. I'll make the count 0 2. Good time to throw that off speed. Curveball drops. 0-2 count from Cagle. Contact back up the middle. This is going to be trouble. It's over the second or shortstop's glove. That's going to play another run. So nice contact by Kennedy. That's his second hit of the season, and he'll play another run. It's 4-2 Elwood City. So 4-2 lead for Elwood City as they have scored three in the fourth inning here. Bats starting to come alive. They now officially are credited with three hits in this inning. At the plate, back at the top of the lineup is number 25, Jacob Biscop. He'll fake the bunt, throw down his cut off there, and the runner will take second base. So stolen base by Kennedy. That puts... Widmeyer at third, Kennedy at second, and still, folks, one gone. So, similar opportunity here now for Biscop. Foul tip there, makes the count 1-1. One, one. <laughs> 
and one count the Biscop. Time called <laughs> last second and again. The umpire's telling Biscop, listen, you got to call it faster than that, man. <laughs> he was granted time, though. <laughs> Pitch goes behind Biscop. And that tells you it was far outside because Biscop, when he bats, he's got the open stance, and that still fit him behind him. 2-1 count. Here's the pitch from Cagle. Outside to the opposite side. Now 3-1. Jacob Biscop in the driver's seat here. 3-1 count, one out. Runner second and third, and three runs so far in this inning. Biscop looking to add to that lead. Swing and a miss. He was behind that one. Makes the count full, 3-2. Have a feeling late decision there to swing on that one, unfortunately. Here's the pitch from Cagle. Swing and a miss, strike three, unfortunately, there for Biscop. Two gone. So that'll bring up number two, Isaiah Lutz. So far in this one, he was walked and grounded out the third baseman. Big runs there at second and third. Contact there to the third baseman. This is in play. Nope, they're going to say foul now. So they're going to say foul. And that is the right call. When he gloved it, it did bounce in fair territory, but when he gloved it before the base, it was in foul area, so all that movement for foul ball. Sometimes I feel like that it's double-edged sword. It's sometimes in favor of the pitcher because now the batter has wasted some energy. On the same time, the pitcher is now out of sequence with the foul ball. Either way, 0-1 count, two outs. Drops in right down the middle. Colt strike makes the count 0-2. As it has officially dropped below 40 on the screen. It's 40 degrees on the mark. 37 degrees local area. And folks, it is cold. <laughs> it is cold. 0-2 count. Up high. Just misses, makes count one, two. Nardone, 64 pitches. Cagle at 73. That means both of these individuals, for obvious marks and obvious reasons, will not be able to pitch for the next two days at least. Contactor, screamer, and it hits Chris Wise, the head coach, in the leg, and he is hurting. Ouch. Oh, man. That hit his ankle, and he is feeling that one. Wow. Coach Wise is up. He is walking around, and he may be charging Isaiah Lutz here after this one. <laughs> so he's starting to laugh. He's telling Isaiah, get in the box. Let's go. Mm, that hurts. So I'll reset it. One, two, two outs from Cagle. Contact back into play. This could be trouble. Lutz with the speed. It hits off the glove, and that will place the run. Unfortunately, hits the glove off of number two, the third baseman, Nick Allen. We'll give credit with Lutz there. I don't think a throw would have been in time. So that will play another run. That's the fifth run of this one. Still with just two outs. Outside for ball one. Pitch comes to Jordan Keller. 
Number four, the catcher. Pitch drops in for cold strike, makes the count even 1-1. Jordan Keller last year, pretty good batter. He had a decent amount of doubles. One of the bigger bats of this lineup. So far held in check in this one. Pitch drops in up high, kind of a waste pitch there. Keeps the count 2-1. Yep, give credit there. Give thanks to James Dodson for Lawrence County Sports Network, kind of telling us the layout of the press box and telling us it was going to be cold base line drive right to the, th oh, man, the center fielder for the third out. Layers to be had, folks. Layers and layers and layers. Under 40 degrees here. It's 5-2, headed to the fifth inning. All right, folks, welcome back here as we head officially to the top of the fifth now. Once again, big shout-out to Slipper Rock University here for allowing us to travel up I-79 and host this one here in late-night action, 8.15 local time, top of the fifth. Bun attempt there fouled off. Gets Nardone to head 0-1. At the plate is number 10, Naya, or sorry, Noah Fardo. The left fielder in this one here. So far grounded out to the first baseline. A one count for Nardone. So far Nardone officially 65 pitches through these four innings. Doing a pretty good job limiting the damage. Contact their third baseline. Oh! Yep, and that's going to be an unfortunate play there with the turf. It's going to make it all the way to second base in play. So that backhand glove there bounces above Aaron Lake. A play that has to be made. He would have made it in time. So unfortunately there, that one will go in the books as an error. That's the, the tough part about playing on turf, folks. It bounces like crazy. So that'll plate Fardo at second. Nobody outs. And we now head to number 68, Joe Zuba. He had the screamer. My goodness. <laughs> A little bit behind that one, but uh, he had that screamer that went the full 315, hit the warning track to right field in front of Widmire. A one count. This time fouled off. A little bit late once again as it comes through through the bleachers here to the right of me. 
within 10 feet of Gary Rosansky, the head coach of softball. He gives a thumbs up. I'm okay. <laughs> Two count from Nardone. Time called by Zuba. So two count. Fardo at second. Nobody out. Big pitch here for Nardone. Up high. Makes the count one two. Two count. Contact coming my way right above the ceiling here. Metal roof fouled off once again. Out of town score update here. Mohawk leads Nishanik 2 0 after the opening inning. And uh, that one, just like us, is being played at a different location. It's at Pullman Park. Strike three, swing and a miss, off pitch, curls outside. Nice pitch by Nardone. There's the first out. Now, Mohawk Nishanik game being played at Pullman Park down in Butler as well, a little bit south of us here. Turf field there as well. One gone here, and up at the plate is number 97. Top of the lineup, Ryan Finnamore, first pitch swing, and that one's going to be fouled by five feet, but... That one landed about the 260, 270 mark, so that was a hard, hard pull to left field. A one count here to Finnamore. Big opportunity with that run at second. Time called. So far, all time called at the plate has been granted by the umpire. A one count. Drops in, called strike. That off-speed pitch is curled back in for Nardone. Back-to-back -back batters, 0-2 count. No two count from Nardone. Swing and a miss, strike three. Back to back strikeouts for Nardone. Big, huge, crucial outs there. Nardone has to get one more. Now batting will be number six, the shortstop, Oscar Roig. He had the fly ball that dropped in front of Cuevas. First pitch to, from Nardone. Off speed, it drops in. I think Nardone has kind of found his bread and butter here tonight. The off speed pitch has been working. Contact there to the shortstop, Lutz.
right, folks, welcome back here. Bottom of the fifth coming up. New pitcher on the mound, and that's going to be number seven, Mike Ponzo. He was playing second base there for Quaker Valley, being DH by Suba. So he'll slide to the pitching mound. Book will close for now on Cagle. He'll slide to third base, and third baseman will slide to, to second base. First pitch here. The number 13, Sam Landis, is fouled out of play. Wolverines picking up four runs last inning out. Uh, so far the score line, 2-4-1, 5-4-1 in favor of Elwood City. So one one count here to Landis. Left lefty here. Swing and a miss. A little bit of an off speed pitch there. Makes the count one two. One two pitch. Up high and outside makes the count even two two. Contact there, fouled out of play. Keeps the count 2-2. Two, two. In play here, pop fly, fly ball here to the left side. Shortstop's going to call it off. Wow, that one kind of... Scaled off there a little bit to the left side, but the shortstop did make the play for the first out. I have a nice little conversation here with Lawrence County Sports Network, James Dotson, keeping an eye on that Mohawk and Shannon game. Yep, James, you're correct. The, the bounces and the hops here at turf fields is tough, but nothing compares to that chop field, that front line, bunt line there at Ewing Park. If you've ever been to Sanders Field, the grass has been mowed a little bit tighter this time around, but uh, that front line grass line for a bunt, it can naturally just stop the bunt and make a tough play. So sometimes you got to be aware of the field of play. 1-0 count from Ponzo down low in the Turf makes the count 2-0 in favor of the batter, number three. That's Aaron Lake, the third baseman. So far, everything has been small. Ball back to the pitcher, but both times it was advancing runners. Contact pop fly this time as well. Seems like the bats for Elwood City is getting underneath of it. Oh, my goodness. The first baseman comes all the way in to make the catch for the second out. Whew. So that'll bring up the pitcher at the moment, number 12, Will Nardone. First pitch high and inside for ball one. Major League Baseball update there. Washington is up on the Pirates 5-3 to three in that game. So we'll keep track of that one as well. Catches the outside corner for strike. Sorry, the inside corner. 2-1 count.
3-1 count. Contact fouled down the first baseline. I guess we're going to try to hit Coach Welsh. He gives a glare to Will Nardone. I don't think we're going to match what happened to Wise, but whew. So that'll make the count full now, 3-2. Outside for ball four. So that'll plate Nardone there at first. Courtesy runner will be once again number six, Carlo Nardone for Will Nardone. Now at the plate, it's going to be number one, Michael Cuevas, 0 for 1 in this one. He was hit by the pitch and had a grounder there to the second base side line. One oh count. Down low. Misses the zone. Makes the count two oh. That would city held hitless until last inning and they are up for for four runs to take a 5-2 lead in this one. Two zero pitch from Ponzo. That one low again in favor of Cuevas, 3-0. Pitch to Cuevas. This one drops in for strike. Three one count. High and inside for ball four. So back to back walks for Elwood City. That'll plate runners. Oh, check that. Oh, boy. That was a called strike, so 3-2 count instead. Runner goes. Contact in play, and this may end the inning here. Hit to the second baseman. He'll make the baseball glove catch for the third out. We'll head to the top of the six. It's 5-2 Elwood City. All right, folks, welcome back here. Top of the sixth inning. Will Nardone still on the mound. He gave up those that early run and since then has held Quaker Valley to just one extra run. It's 5-2. He's kind of found a little something extra here with this off-speed pitch getting ahead. 
getting out of trouble a couple innings in back to back. I may have jinxed him a little bit, or he must have heard me talking about him. 2 1 count now <laughs> from Nardone. Came into this inning at 76 pitches. He's now officially 79. Same roles as we've had in the past now, the past couple years in pitch count. One day rest is 26, two day rest is 51. 76 pitches. You have to go three days rest. Swing and miss makes the count full, 3 2. Hit 100 pitches, that's when you'll end. Unless you start the last at bat at 99 or lower, you can finish the at bat if it does go over. Hit the third baseman leg. He's got to make a play here. He does. He stays with it. A little bounce in front of him. He knocks it down. Throw to first in time. One gone. So one out here for Quake Valley. Top of six. And that brings up number one. That's Todd Cagle. He was the starter for tonight's game. In the books, as of right now, he would take the loss with it being 5-2. So far today, Cagle one for one. He had a walk, and then that single that started everything, that action to get an extra run. Up high once again, makes the count 2 0. Wolverines, Quake Rally back in action technically tomorrow. At Asmic or Asmark Field, line drive, screamer down the line in fair tour ter territory. Hits the 315 mark sign. The throw does come in, so a screamer line drive double for Todd Cagle. Both these teams will play the back end of the doubleheader or the back-to-back -back games tomorrow. Esmark Field, I think at Bouchard Park or something like that down in the Leedsdale area. Four o'clock start time there. Folks, I, I will go on the record saying nah, I don't think that one's going to happen. Both fields probably not ready for that one. So we'll keep you up to date on where that one may potentially happen or if it does happen. If you didn't know, snow is on the way. Time is called by Elwood City Bench. Oh, uh, Bob Vratty will come out and meet with Nardone. We'll take a timeout. 5-2, top of the six. All right, folks, welcome back here. Big opportunity here is number 23. That's Nolan Wagner is at the plate ahead at 1-0. 0 for 1 in this one so far. It's a nice time there by Coach Bob Ratty. He comes out, and Nardone throws a first pitch strike there. And I'll even the count 1-1 one, one after time was called. Comes back, a little... Bouncer here to shortstop Lutz. Throw in plenty of time. Runner does advance the third, but there are two gone. So that'll bring up number 24, Jack Zuba. So far in this one, 0 for 2. With Cagle at third, two outs. 
Swing and a miss there. Nardone gets ahead 0-1. Nardone at 89 pitches. We'll see if he can finish this one off. No doubt Elwood City will have somebody warming up for this one. Contact back in the middle. Oh, just a, excuse me, swing there by Suba, but right up the middle, nobody covering there, and that's a base hit. Scores the run. And I don't think that one was supposed to go that way, but nonetheless, it's now 5-3. And at the plate now is number 10, Noah Allen. 0 for 2 in this one as well. Quaker Valley now officially six hits, one error in this one, three runs. Dalwood City 5, 4, and 1. Pitch drops down, ball two. Called strike. Nardone gets up on the scoreboard, 2-1. Swing and a miss, soft speed pitch there, makes the count now even 2-2. Two, two. Deuces wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs here, big pitch here for Nardone. Excuse me, swing punch there, the foul ball down first baseline. I'll keep Allen in this one for another pitch. Here's the pitch from Nardone. Outside makes the count now full, 3-2. So the runner will be going here. 32, two outs, two run lead. Contact coming my way, hits off the top of the metal roof and drops straight down. Just missing some fans. Woo. Everybody's okay. Thumbs are up. We're okay. 3-2 pitch once again. Swing up high. Strike three by Nardone. A big strikeout. That'll probably close the book for him. But nonetheless, we'll head to the bottom of the six. 5-3 Elwood City. All right, folks, welcome back here. Bomb the six, five three lead for Elwood City. Once again, April is Autism Awareness uh, Month. Tuesday was uh, 
our day to have our baseball game here against Quaker Valley. But uh, we did get it in so far today. Bottom of the six here. Thanks to Slippery Rock University for hosting us, giving us a good opportunity for baseball under the lights. Something we have not said in a long time for technically, we'll go on record, technically a home game for Elmwood City. So Ponzo still on the mound here for Quaker Valley. 0-1 count. It'll be even now, 1-1. One, one. At the plate is number zero, Ryan Widmeyer. One for two. He had that double that got the runs across the board. And he picks up where he left off. This one trailing to the right. That's a base hit. Give credit to Ryan Widmeyer, the senior here. Two for three today for the Wolverines. So Elwood City only five hits, two of them now by Widmeyer. At the plate now is number five, Nate Kennedy. As Elwood City will have number three, Aaron Lake, warming up to finish this last inning here and hopes to pick up the save. 1-1. One, one. Swing and miss there makes the count 0-1. Oh, my apologies. You start getting cold and you start forgetting to push buttons here. Rain is coming into the area here within the next half hour or so hour of Slipper Rock area. This time is called. We won't jinx it. The score is 5-3. We will not talk about any options. This one's going to end in the seventh. A one count. Bun attempt there. Fouled off by Kennedy. So far, Kennedy... Having a tough time bunting this season. It's not always, well, uh, the batter's favorite thing to do, but small ball has been the way for Elwood City so far. And in the meantime, one, two, one for two is Nate Kennedy. So, so far, rain has held off just enough. 0-2 count here. To Kennedy. Up high, swing and a miss, strike three for the first out. So, Elwood City will go back to the top line up here, and that's number 25, Jacob Biscop. He's been held in check today, 0 for 2, and was hit by a pitch early in the first, well, the first at bat. Catcher asks Ponzo to step off real quick and roll through the signs again. Throw over to first. Runners back safe, but that throw was pretty darn high. Give credit to the first baseman there, Wagner reaching up. An attempt by Biscop down the right side. Throw to first in time. So nice bunt attempt there for Biscop. He'll get the runner to second. Two gone. So Ryan Widmeyer at second. At the plate now is Isaiah Lutz. One for two in this one. Just a little insurance run there at second. Time is called by loose. As we officially drop below 40 degrees, now 39 officially on the board, 35 in the area. First pitch inside corner called strike as Ponzo gets ahead, 0-1. Contact there, found out of play. Gets Ponzo ahead now, 0-2. B 
big pitch here from Ponzo. 0 2 2 outs, runner at second. Big, big hole to the left. Time is called once again. No limits at the Whitfield level or at the high school level. You can call time as long as the umpire grants it multiple times. Major leagues, you're only allowed to do it once at each at bat. Contact there. Wow. That is fouled off, but that was a good compact swing, but a pop fly foul ball into the dugout area. Or sorry, to the bullpen area. Keeps the count 0-2. <clears throat> So reset here, 0-2. Runner at second, two outs. Pitch from Ponzo. Inside, jams loots, but it almost, that almost could have been trouble there. It's fouled once again. So Lutz is staying alive, 0-2. Officially have hit 8.50, two hours so far in this one. Almost 9 o'clock local time. Hoping not for another 30-minute inning. A couple games back, Elwood City had back-to-back -back innings that took 40-some minutes. It was an hour and a half, <laughs> basically, for two innings. Here's the pitch. Drops down low. Good at bat by Isaiah in this one, 1-2. One, Contact fouled off right above us here. That keeps the count, 1-2. Nice at bat here. So far, Isaiah's seen six pitches, which means Ponzo will now have to officially have a day of rest as well. One, two count. Up inside, that'll even the count, two, two. So seven pitches thrown during this at-bat. Isaiah's making Ponzo earn it here. Deuce as well, two balls, two strikes, two outs, and runner at second. And at the plate, number two, Isaiah Lutz. Inside and hits the shoulder area up high. And Isaiah will go down to first base. So a nice at bat by Isaiah. Not conventional, but we'll take it. So big opportunity here for Number four, Jordan Keller. He's 0 for 3. He's hit the ball in every direction you can think of. Line drive up the middle for an out. A ground ball back up the middle of the pitcher and the ground ball to third base. First pitch hack in there, unfortunately, swinging a miss. He'll fall behind 0 1. Ponson now up to 37 pitches. Getting up there in the number. Contact in play, but pop fly here. Third baseline, a little bit of trouble as the shortstop's going to have to make the catch up in the lights. He'll make the catch for the third out. We'll head to the top of the seventh. Last chance for Quaker Valley. It's 5-3-0 with City.
All right, folks, welcome back here. Top of the seventh. I did not see the entire bullpen for Elwood City. They actually had two individuals warming up, and that was Aaron Lake and number 45, Owen Andrews. And uh, with this one in favor of Elwood City, uh, head coach Chris Wise is going to say, we're going to close this now. We want this game badly. So they're going to go with Owen Andrews. On the mound, number 45. Neat little opportunity here. Owen Andrews, one and one on the season, but he can, he has the opportunity to get a save now for Elwood City as well. So at the plate will be number 10, Noah Fardo. In this one, 0 for 2. Makes him 1 for 8 on the season. As the Shivers have commenced fans here wrapped up in blankets across the board good crowd probably about 100 125 some people here give credit to them to weather the storm and the rain has held off just enough for this one all right folks here we go top of the seventh at the plate fardo pitching owen andrews First pitch hacking right back up the middle. Foul ball. As Andrew gets ahead. That hit the pole line here behind home plate. You can actually feel it all the way up to the press box here. An open press box. We do like that. Can hear everything very well. Pitch inside. Evens count 1-1. Swing once again, fouled off, hits the metal roof to the right side of us now. Andrews gets ahead of 1-2. Pitch drops in, off speed, it drops in for a called third strike. Strikeout for Owen Andrews, one gone. At the plate, number 68. First pitch swinging, Joe Zuba. He fouls that one off. As Andrews gets ahead 0-1. Owen Andrews going to be trying to be held under 26 pitches here, no doubt. Shouldn't have a problem with that. That way he can go tomorrow if there is a game. Doubtful or hopeful. Off-speed pitch, hit down the line, fouled off once again, and Owen Andrews is now ahead 0-2. On deck, top of the lineup, number 97, Ryan Finnamore. He's done some damage here. His time is called. A two count from Andrews. High pitch, fouled off once again. Keeps the count 0-2. Pitch fouled off again. So, battery here for Elwood City throwing a little bit higher, and Zuba is making just enough contact there to stay alive. 0-2. Oh, 2 pitch from Andrews. Strike three called on the swing and a miss by Zuba. The second strikeout for O, and there's two gone. A 
Frontenac's top line up here, and that's Ryan Finnamore. Ryan Finnamore so far, one for three. He struck the ball pretty well so far in this one. Last out opportunity for Quaker Valley. First pitch. Right down the middle, called strike, 0-1. Just up high, called strike. That'll make the count 0-2. Quickly time is called. Two outs, 0-2 count for Andrews. Fast pitch just outside. Makes the count 1-2, just missed. One, two pitch. Outside again, that'll even the count, two, two. Pitch from Andrews. Swing and a miss, strike three, the final out. And your Elwood City Wolverines finish it off. A save by Andrews, a nice pitching gem. Limiting the damage by Will Nardone. And that swing and a miss is a 1-2-3 inning and more importantly ends the game here for the Wolverines. Official score in this one, 5-3 in favor of Elwood City. So Elwood City will improve to 3-2, 1-2 and two in section play. Quaker Valley will fall to 1-4. And 0-3 uh, in section play. So if Mohawk holds on and defeats Nishanik, it'll be Elwood City in that fourth spot as of right now. So, folks, normally we'll give you more information, but we're going to wrap this one up quickly. Final score, 5-3, Elwood City here at Slip Rock. We do appreciate Slip Rock University hosting this one here at Jack Critchfield Field Park and a 6.50 start time. We'll keep you informed of a game tomorrow. It's doubtful, but uh, keep apprised to Facebook, Twitter, and all of our social media accounts to see where we will be playing. On behalf of Elwood City Sports, my name has been Brad Winhorse, bringing you live coverage here. Final score, one last time, Elwood City 5, Quaker Valley 3. Good night, folks. <laughs>